What's up everybody? Welcome back to another movie review. Today we are talking about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Woo! This movie is awesome. I just, I love the Guardians movie so much. I love how it opens up with Mr. Blue Sky and Groot's dancing and there's supposed to be a big climactic fight going on just to start the show. It, nope. We're going to have a dance party with Groot. And then Drax falls on the radio and music cuts off. And you're like, ah. Oh. <laughs> but we also get, which would play a pretty big role in the third one, the Sovereign here, these golden people. Right? We get Baby Groot. And we get Rocket. We get Drax. Gamora. Star-Lord, of course. Um, before they meet Mantis, right? So we get pretty good big characters in this movie. But we'll get to her in a second. But the OG Guardians... Kick the hell out of that abelisk or whatever they call it. Those same creatures that they kicked their ass in the first opening scene of this movie become friends in the next movie. You know, I just love how James Gunn does little shit like that. Like, creatures that you never thought you'd see again come back and you're like, oh shit, look at that. This movie does a lot and the only pet peeve I have with this movie is that it ends on like a love note and like that oh Gamora and, and Peter have this unspoken thing and I'm a sucker for a love story and I love to see little nerds that don't deserve beautiful women get the beautiful girl you know what I'm saying like it's my dream <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, it is what it is we'll talk about that more we encounter Kurt Russell and Palm Clementive as Ego the living planet aka Peter Quill's papa and Mantis and I love that Mantis joins the Guardians, but she initially is with this bad guy here. And I love Kurt Russell, love him in this role, but the guy, Ego himself, man, is that Ego powerful. He's a celestial, he's a brain, he's a planet, he's a demon, he's a bad guy, no good. <laughs> but, you know, throughout the movie you see Yondu with Kraglin and Ravengers, uh, Sean Gunn as Kraglin, I really love Michael Rooker as... Yandu, I love that he ends up getting the comic book fin on his head. His power with the whistle blowing with the arrow is incredible stuff. I've always thought his character was so goddamn cool. Um, even though he's blue and he's clearly got to go through hours of makeup before he even shows up on set. But Michael Ro Rooker is a, a trooper. And him, this scene right here particularly with him and Rocket talking to each other and... I know who you are, boy, because you're me. What kind of pair are we? You know, like, they're, they're like one and the same. What kind of pair are we? A pair that's going to take on a planet, I reckon. All right, all right. Wait, what'd you say? You know, like, but just shout out to Michael Rooker. I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. You know, like, but the scene that he has once he gets this fin back and he takes out the entire ship, taser face with the fucking arrow awesome scene awesome scene the musical choices by james gunn always tremendous they really are like you can't say anything bad about this man's music choices if you are you know you're just tasteless you have no taste <laughs> i'm standing by that um peter ends up you know i don't use my head to fly the arrow boy i use my heart he gets covered in rocks but Peter uses his heart, thinks about all his things that he did with his friends, flying with Rocket, which is so tear-inducing if you've seen Guardians 3. Uh, but also at the same time, he thinks about Gamora dancing, he thinks about Drax laughing, he thinks about Groot, he thinks about the family, you know, and he's like, you won't be immortal if you kill me. What's so wrong with that? Ah, uh, kills his pop, but first he Pac-Mans him, <laughs> which, you know... I'm going to do some weird shit. I'm going to build a giant statue of Pac-Man. You know? <laughs> I love Chris Pratt as fucking Star-Lord. Um, I think low-key uh, Chris Pratt as Star-Lord is jealous that Rocket ended up getting Guardians 3 and that James Gunn's now going to DC because I think uh, Mr. Chris Pratt's like, yo, James, let's do a fourth Guardians movie or a Star-Lord solo film. What's good? <laughs> like... And I don't think James Gunn's going to be there for it. And I think Chris Pratt really wants him to be. So maybe that will happen down the line. But I don't know. I, would be, I wouldn't be mad to see Chris Pratt back in the role. I would be kind of upset if James Gunn wasn't the director. But, you know, who knows? Maybe even Chris Pratt will be the writer, director, actor. You know what I mean? Maybe that will be the idea. But 
I don't know. I would love to see these characters back. I would be very sad if Guardians 3 was the last time we seen them. Um, overall, this movie gets a five stars from me. That's originally what I gave it. Maybe it's about a four and a half. But I think this is the only trilogy, Guardians 1, Guardians 2, and Guardians 3, that I gave five stars for every single movie in the trilogy. And... I think most of that's because of James Gunn. His writing's great. I love his musical choice. His directing style is funny, great, but also impactful, right? Like there's meaning to what's happening. It's not just jokes for the sake of jokes, kind of like uh, Thor Love and Thunder. Like they had way too much fun with that movie. Granted, I will still stand by that movie. The first time I saw that movie in theaters, we all laughed. We all had a good time. So it was an entertaining movie. But once we all went home, we went, yeah, we could have got a gore, the god butcher, butchering gods, you know, and that's kind of what we all wanted. But it is what it is. You can't, can't get upset about little things like that. Move on. Maybe Thor 5 will be better and Roy Kent will kick his ass. Who knows? Comment below. Do you want to see more Star-Lord in the, in the MCU? Do you want to see that new team of Guardians? Which Guardians movie is your favorite Guardians movie? I honestly think this one might be. Uh, three is a little too sad. One's OG. I do really love that movie. But just this Michael Roker arc. Like, they gave Yondu his own fucking movie, pretty much, for number two here. And his funeral scene at the end gets me every single time. The Ravengers show up, give him the fireworks, the of Ogor, or whatever. The, 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 the fireworks of Ogor? We'll never light at your funeral, Yondu. And then they do. You know, you get Rambo back, or uh, Sylvester Stallone. You get Sylvester back as Ravenger. But overall, just that song choice. Father and son, he's holding the zoom that Yondu got. Hey, Pete, Yondu said to give you this when you got back. If you changed your mind, you became a Ravenger again. You know, like. <laughs> Gives him a Zune, the last song that Yandu was listening to on said Zune before he gives it to Peter in the his passing was Father and Son by Cat Stevens. So he might have been your father boy, but it wasn't your daddy. Because that was Yandu. Oh, fuck. Movie's so good. Five stars from me. Comment below, what did you give this movie? At me on Twitter. If you have any questions for me, if you want to talk more about the Guardians or Ahsoka or anything, Marvel Movie Rewatch stuff. You can follow me on Instagram, link down in the description below, but hit my letterbox up, see what movies I've been watching and reviewing. Please follow me over there. If you want to at me on uh, my email, send in some questions for my podcast, Comically Boston, airs on Mondays, and every time there's a new episode of a Star Wars or Marvel show, the day after will be another episode of Comically Boston every time. So stay tuned for those. You can at me, Comically Boston, at gmail.com and you guys can hit me up with your questions over there and i look forward to talking to you guys more and i will see you guys in the next video peace